I buy a lot of microcontroller boards from dubious sources, usually as cheaply as possible, usually from AliExpress. And between the ordering and the shipping time, your buyer protection runs out very quickly. So I've always wished there was an easy way to test all of the pins on a certain board very quickly, very crudely, just to know if the chip was soldered on properly or not so that I can open a claim and also have it visual because a lot of the places that require you to open claims, like AliExpress, they want photos. And so that's where this project comes in. PCBWay sponsors me and I use their services to make a tiny little board, which you can get for really inexpensive in the link below, uh, that simply houses a series of LEDs and you can just put into the pins of your microcontroller, run some simple code just to check if the pins can output stuff, you know, sync current or source current. So let me explain to you what this board is. So here it is really up close. So all you have here is a row of pin headers. You can use male or female. Uh, I'm probably going to use male and they're going to be facing down away from the camera, away from your, your screen right now. Um, because then you can either pop them into the female uh, pin headers on your micro or just pop them into a breadboard and, you know, wire it up to the micro. And then over here, you get a row of LEDs, you know, cathode towards the line. And these are 0603 size, so they're very, very small. And these will be to indicate a low on your micro. Over here, you have a row of LEDs. These ones will indicate a high, still 0603. And then over here, I have resistors. So the first row of resistors is for the first row of LEDs. The second row of resistors is for the second row of LEDs. And these don't have to be super precise. There is no markings because it'll depend on what LED colors you use. But I tend to use the LEDs that are, uh, or the values that you get in bulk, you know, like uh, 1, 5, 10, you know, 47, 100, 470, et cetera, et cetera. And I would probably go somewhere in the 1 to 10K range because I don't need the LEDs to be very bright. I just want to make sure they work. And don't forget, some microcontrollers have very low current output capabilities. Then over here, you have a VCC and a ground. So you would connect these up to your uh, microcontrollers VIN or the 3.3 or 5 volt, whatever it may be. And then you have some test pads here to add an extra VCC ground. Or if you want to solder in your wires, you can solder them in to these two. And that is about it. It is a very simple project. Uh, and in fact, I used on the front side here, all of these pads, even though they're 0603 um, and 0805 for the resistors, I hand solder all of these because I just think it's a little fun. So the pads are the slightly wider version, so you can hand solder them. And then if you want to smooth it out, you can drop it on a hot plate with a little bit of flux afterwards. Um, or you can order these with the PCB stencil and then use solder paste and uh, reflow them on a uh, hot plate either way. Let me just go over how I get these things soldered. Uh, so first and foremost, I always keep the board in a certain orientation. The uh, cathode of the LED goes over to your left. And so I keep the board in this orientation until at least the LEDs are tacked on. Now, if you forget about anode and cathode, I think that cats are a force for evil. So cats are negative in the world. So the cathode points negative. Then I get these tweezers here connected to my multimeter. Focus might be a bit off, but I've highlighted the positive and there's the negative. And so I just take my LEDs, dump them out into a pile onto my workbench. And then I sort them with these tweezers connected to my uh, multimeter in diode test mode. And I just go and I test the LEDs until they turn on. Don't forget I have the cathode to the left. Same thing as on the board. And so line that up. Doesn't light up. Spin it around doesn't light up just like USB. Sometimes you have to do it three times. Also, um, these are very cheap tweezers. So there we go. So that works. 
and then I add it to the pile here. So now every one of these LEDs are pointed to the left, cathode to the left. So that's good. Then you get your soldering iron started. Then I get some nice thin tin lead solder and I'll go over. And since we need to solder to this row here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and just tin one pad. Now you guys can see this way better than me because you guys are on a huge macro lens. If you get too much solder, you know, just flick it off or um, just clean your tip. It'll stick to your tip, then clean it. And then here we go. Really, you should be using thinner solder than I am here. But this is what I got. This is what I'm using. So go ahead and tack them all. If you get too much, don't be afraid to take some off or come back with a solder wick or solder sucker. Once that's done, uh, then usually I'm right-handed, so I will use tweezers in the left hand. I like these ceramic ones because they don't have any magnetism, although the uh, flux will make them gooey. So then I go and I solder one side in Make sure it's nice and flat, like so. And then once that is ready, then I will solder all of them down in this one row. And then I flip the board over, and then I solder in the other end with a little bit of solder. If it's a little bit crooked at this point, you can fix it. Just very gingerly go and adjust your LED. I think that's pretty good. And then you move on after this is all done. I do the other side and here it is all soldered up. Always a good idea to double check your soldering. So, uh, let's start with this row here, which, um, I got the positive that's going to go into the pin and then it should go into uh, the pad over here. And again, it's this just in my multimeter in diode check mode. It lights and you just want to go down and make sure they all light up. Uh, and that'll tell you if your soldering was successful. It's a little bit easier to do when you're closer to the board, but there's a camera between the board and uh, between me and the board. Okay, green functions. Now I'm going to flip the uh, the pliers around, and then it's going to be between that one and this pad here on the inside row. There, works, works, works. All right, only thing left to do is to determine the resistor values I want. You can do this the old fashioned way with just a breadboard and a couple of resistors, uh, but I have this uh, multi-resistor board, which is quite useful for these kinds of things. So basically I've got uh, 3.3 volts because that's most of the microcontrollers I deal with these days uh, coming in on this blue line. And then it goes through the resistor board and then to this green line. And then I've got this blue line here just tied to ground. And basically I put my blue wire through here and I'm going to put my green wire uh, over on the pads here and that'll light the red LED and we can determine the resistance we want. Now I've got resistor packs um, that I bought a big quantity of um, and I'm going to want resistors at least a thousand ohms, at least 1k ohm because I want to pull very little current. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to move the thousands one here to 1K. 
And I'm going to check the brightness. It's actually quite good. I don't know if you guys can just barely see that in the camera there. That's pretty good. Let's see the five cakes. I've got lots of five Ks as well. Mm, no, that's a bit dim. So I'm going to go back to 1K. So definitely for the reds, I'm going to want 1K. And now to uh, swap this over, you just swap the polarity of your leads. So now the resistor box is on the negative. And then I will go into here. And let's see what we got. So for 1K, the green is quite bright. So let's try 5K. That's about as bright as the red one was. Uh, let me try 10K. I guess uh, 9K is as high as it goes here. There we go. Nah, 10K is a bit too dim. So I'm going to go uh, 5K for the outside here and 1K for the inside here. And those are just soldered the exact same way as the resistors, so you guys don't really need to see that. Now at this point, this board is perfectly imperfect. Uh, it'll work just fine so we can go ahead and solder pin headers. But if you're one of those completionist types, what you can do is you can take a little bit of flux. And I have just some, some cheap stuff from AliExpress here. And I'll just grab it with a little brush. And you can brush flux over it. And then reflow it with either a hot plate or a hot air gun. And you will probably level off all your components and deal with all your cold solder joints. So if you are soldering, soldering, soldering by hand and cannot get all the components to light up to work properly, this is another step you can take. Just put a bit of flux, hit it with a, a heat gun or a hot plate and uh, just watch them melt into place. So we're gonna do that here just for posterity's sake. Now, I've got this on a heat-resistant surface, and you should as well. And make sure that you don't blow the parts away. So, low airflow. I've got it on two here. I've got it uh, quite hot, because I want to get in and get out. My objective is just to see if my LEDs will sit a little bit flatter for those of you who prefer a better, more aligned display. So those LEDs are not flattening out. So you can go and just nudge them. Be extremely gentle. It's easy to have them ping off into nowhere land. I think that's good. And now the most important part is to be very patient and wait for this to cool off before toweling off all the flux. Once it's cool enough, uh, you can pour a little bit of alcohol and use a little toothbrush. 
but because I don't feel like going upstairs and getting a toothbrush and alcohol, I'm using a little bit of window cleaner and a little um, drill brush, but I'm not using it on a drill. And I'll just clean this all off. And it won't be perfect, but I can promise you it'll be much nicer than what it was before with all the flux and also the LEDs will be much straighter. Not all of them straight, but much straighter. And there we go. And now, because we have trust issues, you and I, I'm going to prove to you that it works or be embarrassed and that it doesn't work. Green, 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 all of the greens. Like so, flip the leads. And all of the reds. Let's put some pin headers on. All right, so here's the finished product. I have added two pin headers here heading north and the 15 pin headers here heading south. And for demonstration, I've got this Arduino Mega running simple code that just flips the uh, the pins to high and then low sequentially, one at a time. Uh, so you just connect to your, this one is five volts. You can connect to 3.3 if you'd like, uh, but you do need to connect these power pins. You've got test pads here that you can go out to another board if you'd like. And this can work on any voltage. Now, don't forget, we have tuned it for 3.3 volts. So it'll be slightly brighter up here at 5 volts. But hey, it should work anyways. So let's take a look. So I'll come on and there we go. They go sequentially through the pile. So you can see all of those pins are functioning. Now the reds are a little bright. So if you want to tune your resistors a little bit more, like I wouldn't blame you for instead of putting 1K on them, maybe put 1.5K, but it's the 1Ks and the 5Ks that I have a ton of. So that's what I chose to do because you do need 15 resistors per board. And with PCB way, you get like 10 boards for the same price. I also have another demo because I have other LEDs. So you can use whatever colors you would like for high and low. So here we go. This one is yellow and blue, but let your imagination soar. So yeah, if you want a couple of these to test your microcontroller boards and make sure that they're outputting the uh, correct, well, all the pins are outputting, which means it is soldered on properly, go down to the description below and pick up a set of these. And uh, then you're supporting the channel because you'll be ordering them through PCBWay. Thanks for watching.